From KPRC Channel 2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. And welcome to this Houston Newsmakers Extra. I'm with Harris County District Clerk Chris Daniel, who every year you focus on a story that is of black history significance. And this year, it's the Slocum Massacre. Correct. So talk about how this started. This was in East Texas in the early 1900s, correct? Correct, 1910 in Slocum, Texas. For those uh, listeners who don't, don't know where that is, just outside of Palestine, mm -hmm. uh, Northeast Texas, outside of Henderson, along 59, outside of Lufkin. Uh, and what was happening at that time is uh, there had been some minor squabbles, minor disputes over contract, over positions, uh, and those had been escalated into stories that African Americans were meeting in mass at night in crowds of 200 or more and that they were planning on attacking or massacring all the whites. And so this was the squabbles you were talking about were between whites and African Americans? Correct. Okay. And so uh, that escalated into almost a viral fake news story that really got all the residents uh, paranoid for no reason at all. And uh, once they became paranoid, they started bordering up the schools and having the, the children and, and the women go into churches and barricade themselves in. Or were and these whites or just whites and Just blacks? the whites. Okay. And the whites would then go off to uh, uh, the local general store and buy up all the ammunition. And when one of the judges found out about this, he actually issued an order, stop selling guns, stop aim selling ammunition. But by then it was too late. They were already sold out. And then what happened? I understand that there was all you needed was one shot fired and then from that point on it escalated. One shot fired and then they started leaving in droves of small packs to seven of eight people to as large as uh, 30 to 80, uh, 30 to 40 people. And there were stories that there were much larger crowds of, Afri of, of whites going and basically hunting down the local African-American population. And that must have been devastating to them because it's a word of mouth and they just know that they're being shot and people are being shot and killed. Correct. During that period of time. Do we know how many were killed or is it kind of difficult? So to it's take? 13 confirmed. But what you have to understand is that the, the the town was surrounded by marshland and where the majority of the confirmed bodies were found were as they were leaving into the marshes, being shot in the back like animals with their packets or with whatever goods they had in their hands by their sides. Which stands out for me in some sense is that the sheriff and the prosecuting attorney in that area at the time, they actually filed charges and actually arrested some people. Correct. And knowing that they would probably uh, be acquitted before uh, a replacement judge and before a jury of their peers, uh, the judge at that time actually held them without bail with the purpose of at least trying to have some semblance of a punishment. Mm -hmm. And of course that uh, being held without bail was overturned on appeal and once that was uh, done, they, that, the, the limited time they served was the time they spent in jail. But they were moved, that the, the case was moved to Harris County though, wasn't Correct. it? Correct. Uh, in order to, uh, because there was such contention with that sitting judge and prosecutor and the surrounding county sheriffs, uh, they actually had the case removed to Harris County, which is why we were able to talk about it today, because mm -hmm. we painstakingly preserved this case here in Harris County. Unfortunately, the DA at that time in Harris County basically sat on the case and never prosecuted it further. And they had their, so no, no one, other than time served, they never served any time? Other than time served awaiting uh, trial, uh, once they were free, they were free. So no happy ending to this story. And also understand that the people who actually did the initial arresting and prosecuting in East Texas, through an election cycle, they got voted out. Either they resigned because of, a, of the, what they saw happening to their peers, or they were immediately voted out in mass. What's the moral of this story? Well, one, you cannot listen to fake news. You must observe for yourself what the facts are. And two, you cannot be allowed uh, to uh, have this herd mentality, allow yourself to have this herd mentality when things are going on that are highly emotional. But most importantly, uh, we need to make sure that we follow the law and we need to make sure that we keep our sake of humanity. As we're going to disagree on things, right. but it is never okay to take another life in any case. And what is so sickening about this case is not only is the cover-up that occurred in Harris County, but the fact that they spent the next day seeing if they could uh, uh, clean up the story by shooting any other witnesses. Ugh. Elderly that were sitting on the porch and in front of their house. Well, I, I think I like the, the, the black history stories with a happier ending from you, but maybe next year. It is tougher and tougher to find those happy endings because you have to understand the majority of the cases have to do with disputes over sale of human chattel mm. or in being unjustly imprisoned. Well, without you and bringing these things to light, we have to make sure we hear and don't forget. That's the key. If we don't forget, we're, we're going to repeat these mistakes in the future. Right.
Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Harris County District Clerk, Chris Daniel, thank you for joining me on this Newsmakers Extra. Thank you, sir.